Welcome to the Cybersecurity Mindset Channel. My name is Alex Hubbard. I am a cybersecurity engineer slash sysadmin slash IT guru. I wear many hats. Uh, today, let's talk about asset management. What comes to mind when you think of the term asset? Usually it's a tangible piece of hardware, a laptop, a server, uh, a desktop, something along those lines. And, and many of the times when I request an asset inventory from a client, that's what they hand me. A spreadsheet with serial numbers, model numbers, makes, purchase dates, you know, who the system is assigned to, that sort of thing. Those are all great and awesome that you have those documents. However, hardware isn't the only inventory that you should keep. You also need to think in terms of software assets. Uh, what software is present in the environment? What systems have what software installed? Uh, asset management is the entire package. Asset management is likely one of the first items on the list of almost every request list that I hand off to a client uh, before I evaluate their environment. I would say just about every cybersecurity framework out there requires some form of asset management. You know, it's, asset management is more, it's more than just a spreadsheet or tool to track inventory. Yes, you want to know what's in your environment, but that's only part of it. Asset management encompasses the, it's the whole package. Uh, it encompasses the hardware, the software, it's procurement, it's disposal. Uh, a well-developed security program is going to have these things documented in the form of policies and procedures. Asset management is such a fundamental aspect of cybersecurity because it, it forms the basis for critical security processes. Without a detailed understanding of what hardware and software assets are in your environment, it, it can become challenging to implement, uh, it's almost impossible to implement uh, effective, appropriate security measures. So you'll want to understand what is in your environment so you can take the appropriate action. Um, there's a few reasons why asset management is so critical to cybersecurity. From a risk assessment perspective, understanding the assets in your organization, and this is probably the, the most important one, uh, allows you to assess potential risks accurately. You know, by knowing what hardware and software is, in, is running in your network, you can identify vulnerabilities and prioritize them based on the criticality of the vulnerability, the criticality of the system, and reduce the attack surface and overall enhance your security posture. Asset management is part of patch management. Again, just like I said earlier in the video, you can't patch what you don't know exists in the environment, right? So it enables you to track which software versions are running on each system, making it easier to identify devices that need critical updates and or patches. You know, this is a proactive approach that helps protect your organization from known vulnerabilities. It's also helpful for zero days. If you watched one of my previous videos, you want to know if a device or a piece of software in your environment has a zero day. So if you don't know that device or software exists in your environment, you can't take action to remediate it. Compliance and auditing is, is, another, uh, is another portion of asset management. Many cybersecurity frameworks and industry regulations and regulations in general mandate uh, proper asset management. So maintaining an accurate inventory of assets helps demonstrate compliance during audits and ensures that uh, you know, they adhere to relevant security standards. Incident response is also part of asset management. You know, in the event you have a security inc inc incident, uh, you, having a complete inventory can aid in swift and targeted response. So if you have uh, assets that are critical and those are documented, so you can, you know, maybe respond to those first and get those back up and running first over, you know, something that's less critical. Uh, you, you, you can quickly identify affected assets, you know, you can quarantine them if needed and investigate any uh, extent of breach or incident. Asset management goes beyond just the security benefits. It also helps op optimize cost management. So by understanding hardware and software life, life cycles, organizations can plan for hardware upgrades and software renewals, avoiding any kind of unexpected costs. So there are plenty of tools out there that you can purchase to assist your organization with this endeavor. Uh, PDQ Inventory and Landsweeper, those are just two products that come to mind first for me. Uh, these are tools that I've used numerous times over the years as a system administrator. They're relatively inexpensive and easy to get spun up. Uh, they'll be able to scan your network and inventory both hardware and software assets alike. Now, if you're a Microsoft 365 shop, uh, you can likely leverage Intune to perform a simil similar function. 
the point I'm trying to make is that there are, there's many ways, logistically speaking, to get asset management up and running in your environment. Asset management is one of those things that is pretty simple to implement, and it's often overlooked by system administrators and IT teams alike, uh, especially in a small environment. There's a lot going on. Uh, it's kind of one of those things that's a low priority for, for most. It's what I would consider a pretty low-hanging fruit, and while the tools themselves are fairly straightforward to obtain and implement, let's talk about the policies and procedures behind asset management. Your cybersecurity program should encompass an asset management policy along with a set of procedures to back that policy up. Your, your asset management policy should state things like how your hardware and software will be purchased, procured, or obtained. Who's authorized to obtain those assets? What happens to those assets if a piece of hardware is stolen? Uh, what's its useful life expectancy? And how are you going to dispose of that asset after its useful life? You know, your policy should reference any procedures you have for handling these topics. Uh, for instance, your help desk may have a procedure where a system is, when a system is decommissioned, they remove the system's drive, wipe it, and send it off to be physically shredded. Now, this depends upon the nature of the data that's on the drive, uh, but that policy is something, or that, excuse me, that procedure is something that should be documented. Uh, you may also want the policy to state if your organization is following uh, hardening baselines for systems such as the Center for Internet Security's hardening guidelines, uh, or if you're in the government sector and you're following the Secure Technical Implementation Guides, or STIGs, um, these are all items that a well-written asset management policy should include. Um, so let's take a little bit of a deeper dive into what a well-developed asset management program would look like. Procurement. Uh, so the policy should define the process for acquiring new hardware and software assets. You know, this includes specifying authorized vendors, budget considerations, uh, approval workflows, and you know, the involvement of any kind of relevant stakeholders who are going to be operating this particular or using this asset. Asset tracking is another one. The policy should outline how assets are being tracked throughout their life cycle. This includes maintaining uh, you know, a central repository for all the assets, so, so an inventory, uh, assigning unique identifiers, and updating information as assets move or change hands. A lot of the times uh, in smaller businesses that I've been in over the years, you know, a laptop may have two, three, four different users over the course of its lifespan, and sometimes uh, that inventory doesn't always get updated as to who has that particular piece of hardware at this at a particular time. So tracking, effective tracking is also part of asset management and you want to be sure that that's built into your program. Access control is another one. You want to define who has access to request a new piece of hardware or software, who has access to obtain it and actually purchase it, and then you want to ensure that only authorized personnel from your you know, IT or cybersecurity team can install or manage the assets so that you reduce the risk of unauthorized software or hardware being introduced into the environment. Disposal is a big one. Uh, you should have a section in your policy that addresses how assets are decommissioned and disposed of properly, you know, whether that's recycling, donating, selling, uh, the policy should define procedures for securely wiping data and removing uh, any kind of sensitive information from a retired asset. Um, you'll also want to be able, you, you also want that section to uh, reflect updating your inventory so that when an asset is disposed of, you have a record of that in your, in your inventory. Incident reporting, uh, you want to include guidelines for reporting a lost or stolen asset. Uh, this is going to ensure that any incidents involving assets are addressed properly and minimize the impact on security and operations. Maintenance, establishing guidelines for maintaining your assets, including you know, hardware maintenance, software updates. Uh, this ensures that assets remain in good condition throughout their useful life, and it does reduce the risk of unpatched vulnerabilities. Now, patching could be considered... Uh, in a, in a separate policy, a patch management policy. So if you have a patch management policy, um, you can likely reference that. Compliance requirements. If your organization must adhere to specific regulations or industry standards, your policy should reference these requirements and explain how asset management supports compliant effort, compliance effort. By developing and implementing a comprehensive asset management policy and program, organizations can better gain control over their IT infrastructure reduce risks, and improve overall cybersecurity posture. 
Remember, asset management is an ongoing process that requires continuous monitoring and improvements to stay effective in an ever-evolving threat landscape. It's, it's, a, it's a living, breathing thing. You want to stay on top of it. There's always going to be changes, and it's never going to be done. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing below. It really helps my channel out with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, you can also visit my blog site, achubbard.com, for additional content. Uh, I'll post a link there as well to download a sample asset management policy that you can use to get started in your asset management endeavors. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to exploring more cybersecurity topics with you in the future. And in the meantime, stay secure, and I'll see you in the next video.